All right, so this is a continuation from Project 5 from the Typography class for Spring 2016, where we are going to take these layouts and we're going to play around with headlines and subheadlines. Okay? Now, let me find printing in Germany. Now, I'm going to start this out simple. The layouts we showed on Blackboard, some of them have more complex features, and that's fine if you want to do complex things. I'm going to start out simple, though. And I'm going to share with you something I shared with Dom at the beginning of the semester, which is a thing called paragraph styles. This is assuming you want all your subheadlines to look exactly identical to one another. Okay? Are we ready? Here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select printing in Germany. But when you do this, when you know you're going to use paragraph styles, I've already shared this with you, always click three times to get that line because you want the invisible character. Let me turn on my grid so you can actually see my grid. This is my two column grid. And I click three times. Oh, you know what? My microphone is on. Yay. Whew. Uh, I click three times to get that. You want the invisible character. Now, I'm going to make this a different font. What? Yeah. I'm going to use Futura and a second font. Guys, just a general rule of thumb, this may be something you might, might want to commit to memory or even write down, is usually in a publication or in any design, we typically only use two typefaces in a publication. That is so hideous to, to have to, like, oh my god, you guys love your fonts, you love typefaces, you want to use every typeface under the sun, but we have to exercise restraint most of the time with by using two typefaces that complement and contrast one another. Uh, you can get away sometimes with three. Three is kind of like, yeah, sometimes. Now, within those typefaces, you have several members of the family, which would include, you know, your bolds and your condensed and those kinds of things. So the typeface is just the name. So for me, it's Futura. But I can use any member of the family. And whatever my second typeface I decide to choose, I can use any member of that family. Okay, so two typefaces and any members of the family. So let's say for this, um, my goodness, um, maybe I want to make my headlines look a little old-fashioned because this is about an old topic, and Futura is quite futuristic. Uh, it doesn't seem like it now, but uh, it was its time. So let's say I'm going to use Big Caslon, and I'm going to make it bigger. Does anybody know how I'm making it bigger quickly like this? You see how I'm doing this? What's that? You're kind of close. No, kind of close though. Let me tell, share with you what I'm doing. I'm holding down Shift and Command. And I'm using the greater than key, which is the period key, to make it larger. And I'm using the lesser than key to make it smaller. That's handy. You guys like that handiness? Greater than, lesser than. Shift and Command, greater than. Shift and command lesser than. On a PCB, shift and control. Okay, so let's say I want to make that big Caslon, and oh, all I have is medium, so I guess I'm going to have to live with that. Now, I don't necessarily want, and this is a pretty standard rule too, I don't necessarily want a lot of space after this paragraph and before my body copy, okay? This is considered a paragraph, this, this line. So I'm going to go to my paragraph formatting, which is that backwards P on the control panel. And where I have my space after, I'm going to reduce that to zero. Okay, that's the, we, we went to space after on a previous uh, lesson, but it's, on that control panel at the top, it's four fields over from the left. So I'm going to put in a zero. And I'm going to hit the tab key so it'll stick. Mm, uh-oh. What is that? That is a big no-no, guys. I know I seem to split hairs here, but that is a big no-no. So now I have to figure out, do I need a little space there? I'm going to just adjust it so that doesn't touch. So for me, my space after ended up being uh, three points. For you, it might be something else. Yes, um, Nikki? Well, sometimes you change the font and it doubles the text. 
zoom in and hit Command Plus and Command Minus. Did anything happen? Did it go back to normal? Okay. Sometimes it has a dupe, uh, it'll double images sometimes. I'll just like, oh, just didn't have any new ones. Oh, wow. Well, you have two text boxes, one right over the other. Delete that, delete one of them. Just, yeah, now you can delete this one. Okay. What was that? What was that? Oh, oh, if you did Command Plus versus Shift Command Plus, uh, if you did just Command Plus, it might duplicate it. Okay, I'm going to try that because I never used that one. So I'm going to hit Command Plus. Oh, Command Plus or Command Greater Than? Plus. Command, oh my, Command Plus. Oops. You might have done an accidental keyboard shortcut when you tried to zoom in or that out, maybe. Yeah, who knows? And I don't know what it was, so... Could have been Command D, which is duplicate, but then again, Command D is uh, deselect, but not that's in Photoshop. Command D is file place here. Okay, we don't know what happened there, but you somehow duplicated that box. <laughs> All right. So now I have this, so I have a little bit of space after that because I don't want my D senders touching my A senders. You guys know what D senders and A senders are, yes? The G, the bottom of the G is a D sender. The upper part of the B is an A sender. It ascends and D senders go down. Okay. Now let's say I want every other subheadline to look just like this one. Let's talk about paragraph styles. Fabulous stuff. Now I don't see anything here that says paragraph styles. So what I typically will do is I will go to this button up in the upper right hand corner. It says Essentials and I will click on that and I will switch it to Typography. And we will notice that the, oh wow, lots of things change. This especially over here, this panel changed quite a bit. A lot more features over here on the far right. Now in that far right panel over here, what you want to do is down three items up from the bottom is a thing that says paragraph styles. Click on that. Now I'm going to rip mine off so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, you don't have to rip yours off. And right now that text is highlighted. Make sure your text is selected and you've made it whatever font you want and size. And right now it says that this paragraph style is normal. Well, I don't want normal. I want my own. So what I'm going to do is you will see that there is a little, uh, it looks, it's just like we would create a new page. There's a little new icon right next to the trash can. Looks like a little dog-eared page. Well, this is, this one, when we click on it, it's going to create a new paragraph style. And it automatically names that style, paragraph style one. I don't know if you can see this, but it, re, it made a new one and named it paragraph style one. Now, what I want to do is click on that paragraph style one. And then I'm going to double click on it. Oh, look what happened. This thing opened. Whoa. Now I'm going to name this. This is a subheadline. What do you think I should name this paragraph style? Subheadline. Subheadline. And I'm going to hit OK. All right. Now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to hit Command and Zero. The number zero, not the letter O. If you hit Command O, you get this, which is, oh, you want to open some InDesign stuff? No, I don't want to open another InDesign file. You hit Command Zero, and it zooms out so you can see the rest of your layout. I'm going to scroll over to another subheadline. Yes. Question. Um, why do your subheadline doesn't have a plus minus? Oh! Sepeda has a problem here, and I'm not sure why that is. Sometimes it's something that came over from Microsoft Word. If there is a little plus sign, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make it have a plus sign. Okay, just give me a second. I'm just gonna give it something that makes it have a plus sign. My subheadline now has a little plus sign next to it. Those are bad, actually. Uh, not all the time, but most of the time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, hey, right here, this little backwards P with a no plus sign symbol. It's hard to see because it's very small. 
but it's right next to the new button. If I click on that, it gets rid of, well, let me highlight the text. It should get rid of that. Hmm, mine's acting odd, but yeah, it's gone. You say no plus sign, okay? And then mine's grayed out because there is no plus, nothing different there. So again, to get rid of the plus sign, you highlight the text, you make sure, it already tells you what paragraph style it is, and you say no plus sign next to the paragraph style. Okay? Those can come back to haunt you a little bit later, so we get rid of those plus signs. It's all right. Okay, did you go to typography and go to, uh, did you go to essentials up here? Okay, and you have typography. And okay, let me, guys, let me share you a problem that Dom's having because you could very well have this problem as well. I'm going to create the same problem. Dom is in here and he has the essentials, but the last time he may have used the essentials, he might have ripped off the paragraph style so it was the, the, the thing, so he could use it, so he didn't have to look at it over there. And then he closed it. And it's no longer around. Does anybody know for any panel, any panel that would float up over here, where would I go to find them? Is it window or view? It is window. Window. This one's a long one, I'm sorry to say, but styles and paragraph styles. So if you if they disappear on you, this is how you get it. So I just changed printing in Germany. I made it a different font and I made it bigger. And I told it, hey, I'm going to make a paragraph style so I can use this formatting again and again and again. All right. Now, are you ready to use it again and again and again? Are you ready to make your lives easier? Let's make our lives easier. Life's tough enough as it is. I'm going to go to Insight and Innovation. I don't even have, I do not even have to triple click in here. I just have to have my cursor in there. It, with a paragraph style, it just says, oh, you must be wanting to affect the paragraph your cursor is in. I put my cursor in there and go, oh, guess what, Insight and Innovation? You are a subheadline. And I come over to my paragraph styles, and I click on the subheadline. And, oh, my gosh, look. It changed it to be exactly the same font, point size, letting everything that the other one was. Which takes more time? Highlighting inside an innovation, going, finding the font, and, and then you got to figure out, oh, what size was that? That takes forever. So I'm not about that. Now, continue to legacy is the next one. It kind of popped up in here in this box. That's okay. As soon as I make it big, it'll go back down to the other guy. So I put my cursor in the next subheadline, which is continuing a legacy. And I'm saying, oh, you're a subheadline. Oh, nope, he didn't pop down. What's the solution to that problem? He didn't go down to the next line. How do I solve this problem? Pull the little anchor point up and squeeze him out so he ends up coming up at the next uh, the next box. Fabulous! Now, how many of you guys like it when your boss stands over your shoulder while you're working and tells you to do stuff? How, how many of you guys like it if I stand over your shoulder while you're working? It is awesome. It's the best feeling around. And I tell you, oh, guess what? Those subheadlines aren't set properly. I need you to change them to a different font. I need to change you. I need them to change to a different color. I need this to change a lot. And you're going, and you got a hundred pages of this. And you're going, oh my gosh. But really, about what I'm about ready to show you, you'll be able to say this. No problem. Let me show you how to make it no problem. All right. I am not going to zoom in because I want to show all three of these subheadlines because I what I'm about to do will affect them all in a split second and do the same thing to all of them at the same time. You guys ready for this? This is something that you will wish you had known a long time ago. Microsoft Word also has these. So I'm going and printing in Germany. I don't even have to highlight it. My cursor's in there. I'm going to edit the paragraph style. I don't, don't you dare go up here into this character and paragraph formatting up here. Don't you dare. Don't you dare do that. 
after you've made a paragraph style, you go to the actual paragraph style and you double click on it. Okay, so right here in this left column is everything you need to adjust any setting for these paragraphs. Color, paragraph rules if you want to rule below it or something. Color, size, font, everything. One stop shopping. Now I'm going to move this off to the side a little bit so I can kind of see at least two. Well, before I do, I'm going to hit the preview button. I want to see what I'm, you know, I want to make sure I can see how it's affecting the type. I'm going to move this out so I can at least see two headlines. And I am going to go to, I'm going to go from the top down. Right now it says general. I'm going to go to basic character formats. That's going to give me the font. I don't want big Caslon. I'm standing over your shoulder going, I don't want big Caslon. I don't want Times New Roman. I don't want Minion Pro. So you'll be like, okay, no problem. And you'll click here and you go, how about chalkboard? Oh, this is horrible, by the way. How about chalkboard? And look, they both changed. They all changed. Oh my gosh, shut the front door. Are you kidding me? Just like that. Don't you wish you knew this before today? Okay. Nope, I don't want chalkboard. I want Dito, which is kind of like Bedoni. Oh my gosh, I just changed to Dito, all of them. Furman Dito created uh, the, one of the first, uh, what they call modern typefaces, where the serifs don't have any, uh, any curve between them and the main stroke. But Bedoni copied it, and he became famous. So poor Dito. So I'm going to go through here, and I can find any typeface that's loaded. Oh, there's Minion Pro. No, mm -mm. Myriad Pro used to be the default. Um, hmm, Optima, that's a lovely typeface. And I'm going to also increase the size of it. Make sure nobody's going crazy here. They're all changing. I'm changing the size. Oops, I'm rewrapping. I don't want to rewrap. There we go. And I want to make it um, bold. Let's see if bold's loaded. Yep, bold. Mm -hmm. You see how it's all just bang, bang, bang. You don't have to go and select every single one and change it. That's how we used to do it. We used to waste our entire time and part of your life is gone because you used to do that. How many of you guys have wasted a good portion of your life highlighting every bit of text? and Uh-huh. Not anymore, sisters and brothers. No more. I have just given you a life-altering tip here. It's life-altering in that you're not going to waste all your time. You're not going to be all stressed out. You can say, no problem. I'll do it right now. And if this were a hundred or a thousand or a million pages, and they all were using, and I'm using this on all of them, it will change all of them like that. Okay? This is so, oh my God. Guys, I didn't know this when I graduated from college. Of course, I was using Photoshop version one and PageMaker, but when I found this thing out, I was like, oh my God, I can take control of my life again. I can go out on a date instead of working here till midnight. So I can change color. Let's talk about color. Does it matter if you're out of the visual? Have to be in typography You do not have to be in the typography essentials for this. Uh, you can have or the typography. You can stay in essentials and you, just, you can just go to window and styles and bring up that. Yeah, you can stay in your essentials. That's a good question. So um, if I want to, let's say I want to adjust the spacing on this because maybe the descenders are touching the ascenders. I can go to... Uh, indents and spacing. Oh look, there's space after right here. Oh, and it will do it live. I'm like, oh, let me give it a little more space. Oh, that looks great. Or a little less space. It does it live to all of them all at one time. Oh, I like that. That looks good. Let's talk about color. Color is way down at the, it's, it's five items up from the bottom. It's down here. Character color. I click on that. Now, I don't have very many colors in my swatches panel right now, and I'm going to have to share with you how to get colors. But right now, I'm going to make this red. Oh my gosh, it made all of them red! Just like that! I think you guys get it, don't you? This is a life... This is a quality of life issue. Your quality of life gets better knowing this. I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to hit Command S because I'm like, I'm so happy with this. I'm saving it. 
We could even do this to the body copy. So if, if I wanted to, which in this case, it's not a really big document, but if this were a big document, I would go, now this guy, he's a special paragraph because he's got a drop cap here. He would be his own paragraph style because that is paragraph formatting. A drop cap is part of paragraph formatting. So I might go in here and I might highlight this paragraph and say, hey, new style, please. Oh, it still calls it paragraph style one. I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to call it drop, oops, not drip, drop cap body copy. And I hit, okay, I'm not going to change anything yet. And then I'm going to highlight the rest of the body copy. And I'm, I should have done this before I did my sub headlines because then I could have highlighted everything, made a body copy, and then go change my sub heads. But I'm going to highlight this and say, oh, well, I need to make a new style out of this. Now, it's very similar to the style that's a drop cap body copy style. Um, so what I'm going to do, now this might throw some of you for a loop, loop, so just bear with me here. I'm going to click on drop cap body copy. Of course, we know that this is a no-no, having a drop cap in all of these. But I'm going to duplicate the paragraph style and then edit those out of there through the paragraph style. So here is how I duplicate a paragraph style. I right click on it and it says two items down, duplicate style. I click on duplicate style and it says drop cap body copy copy. <laughs> it always puts the word copy at the end. I'm going to get rid of the word copy. And I'm going to get rid of the words drop cap because this is just going to be body copy. And I'm going to find where this drop cap happens. Well, it's not in basic character formats here. Let's try advanced character formats. I don't see anything here that says drop cap. And then some spacing. Now I've got to search for it. Maybe if I read all these, strike through, extend the line open. Ooh, it's in here. So, oh, there it is. Drop caps right here. Drop caps and nested styles. There we go. It says lines three. Now I'm going to put one. I'm going to hit the preview button off and on. Well, nothing happened, but I'll tell you why here in a second. I'm going to hit OK. And because I assigned this as drop cap body copy, I now have to click on the word bot, the words body copy. Actually, I called it body cop, but that's bad. And now when I click on the body copy paragraph style I created, it takes them away because I told this to get rid of them. Now, you, you might argue that, hey, why don't you just create a new paragraph style and name it? Um, sometimes that's quicker, sometimes it's not. Now I'm going to go to the rest of these paragraphs and I'm going to make sure that they are also told that they're body copy. And I'm going to save it. Guys, this is awesome stuff. I don't know that you think so, but I, you know, when, when you work so hard at something and so long and you've wasted so much of your life doing things the long way, and, which is the wrong way, oh, You'd much rather work smarter than harder any day. Now, what if I stood over your shoulder and I said, oh, Futura Medium? Why are you using Futura Medium for your body copy for such an old story? Perhaps you might want to choose something a little bit more antiquated looking. Now, I'm not going to say that we can't use Futura Medium, but this is maybe somebody saying that. That's okay. That's okay. But let's say somebody said, no, no future. We're using, we're going to use something else. Well, what we're going to have to do then in this case is we're going to have to edit the drop cap body copy. We're going to, have to go to basic character formatting. Or maybe they just said, hey, Futura seems a little big. Okay, well, I'll take it down to nine. Now, watch what happens here. This is why I duplicate paragraph styles. It not only changed this drop cap body copy to nine points, but because I duplicated the paragraph style for the other body copy, it changes it as well. 
if I had created a new paragraph style for this, instead of duplicating the other one, it would not change it. Now I'm really aggravated because I have a reflow issue. This has aggravated every single one of you guys from Monday till today. Has it not? Reflows and having the text be, oh, darn it, now here it's over here. How many of you guys have really kind of struggled with the reflow thing? Me, I, I always had. Okay, so let me share with you another top secret thing that I rarely get to share, but I'm going to share with you. If you put your cursor at the end of the paragraph that's supposed to be in that box, or before the beginning of the paragraph, that would be better, pardon me, before the beginning of the next line that needs to move, there is a keyboard shortcut for this action. Let me show you where to get it and I'll share with you a keyboard shortcut. The keyboard shortcut is super simple. But we're going to tell it to break to the next column, which in, in InDesign's mind is the next text box. Okay? So this is going to type, insert break character, and we'll do a column break. Wait a second. There was a symbol there. You see how it went down the next column? Awesome. I might do the same over here. That way if something reflows, I'm going to put it right here and continue to legacy. I'm going to go to type, insert break character, column break. Oh, look, there's a little, there's a little funky icon there. Kind of looks like a, I don't know, maybe if a turtle were an alien and that was their face. It's got a little arrow that points up and a line above it. Does anybody know what that key is on the keyboard? No, you don't. I didn't either. That is the enter key, not the return key. Some of you guys have hit the enter key before and you get the red, the little red thing and you're like, why, where'd all my text go? The enter key is, oops, see, now it's gone because it's going, hey, I doesn't, I want to go to the next one. Uh, the enter key is the break to the next column thing. Why is that doing that? It shouldn't do it so bad. I'll just do it on the one. Because sometimes when I'm working in a layout, I'm like, I want this subheadline to start here, and I don't want it to reflow, and it keeps reflowing to my previous page. So you can always hit the Enter key, maybe at the end of the paragraph, if it, if it wants to jump in there and not do right. There we go. I did it at the end of paragraph. So I'll share with you my problem. I put it before the C in Continuing Legacy, and I hit Enter, and it disappears. Ah! Well, in this case... I need to put it at the end of the previous paragraph and hit enter and it will not get that to go away. It will stay there. However, it did add an extra little space here and I don't know exactly how to deal with that automatically. I do know that if I put my cursor before the C and continuing legacy and hit delete, that, that break is still there, but I don't have the extra white space. So there's a little extra thing to do there. But watch what happens now. When I decide to make my text box wider, continuing legacy will stay put. Are you guys ready? We're not used to this yet. Click, drag, whoa! Continuing legacy did not wrap up into that top line. Awesome. Oh my gosh, look at that. Now, if I put my cursor in here before continuing to continuing legacy and deleted that pair that line break, oh, it'll go back up in there. So I'm going to hit the enter key to get him back down there. Explain it again. Okay. I'm going to start from the beginning. Oops. I'm going to delete my paragraph breaks. Or not paragraph breaks, they're column breaks. Pardon me. Paragraph break is the return key. A column break is the enter key. There we go. Okay. So what happens here is I have a problem with reflow because I changed, I changed the body copy to be a smaller type size. And when I did that, printing in Germany just popped right up into that previous text box. I don't want it ever to do that. I want it to be separate. So if I put my cursor 
in this, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to just going to say to be on the safe side, to make it work at all, all times. Let's put the cursor at the end of the paragraph where you go like, okay, I'm putting at the end of the paragraph that I want to isolate from the next paragraph. Put my cursor there and I hit the enter key, which is in essence the same thing as going to type insert break character and column break. Okay, so I'm going to just hit enter. Printing in Germany moved down to the box that I intended it to be in. Now, there is a problem in that it does create a little extra space here. So I do have to get, I don't want to click in here and hit delete because that, let me show you the invisible. Show hidden characters. That, well, let's see, this little symbol right here, that means that the enter key has been hit and that means column break. It usually is a backwards P when you hit just return. Now, what happened is, I wish it wouldn't do this, but what happened is it goes ahead and it puts an extra paragraph return in there. I don't know why, I just, I just don't know why. So I get that guy and I hit delete and I still have the paragraph, or excuse me, the column break. It's still there, okay? So I am going to, go to the next area where I know that I never want insight and innovation to be near the ending paragraph of the printing in Germany text. So I do the same thing. I go to the end of this printing in Germany body copy. Maybe I just highlight that little P. That's probably what I need to do. Turn your invisibles on. Highlight the little P and hit enter and it won't add the P into the next line meaning it won't get that to reflow. Aha, I just, I just cut out a step. I love it when I can cut out a step. And now with insight and innovation with this guy, I go to the very end paragraph. Again, to get this backwards P, this blue stuff, these are non-printable invisible characters. You would go to type show hidden characters. Okay, right now I don't want to hit hide hidden characters because I want those to show this type. Show hidden characters gives you those little hidden items. Now I get the type tool and I highlight that little backwards P because I'm going to replace it with a pair with a uh, column break. I hit enter and you can see it's got a little arrow pointing down. Let me hit command zero to zoom out and continue in his legacy is parked back where he's supposed to be parked. Now I can freely manipulate this layout without it just giving me, you know, the worst time of my life and with reflow. So I can take any of these columns. I'm like, oh, printing in Germany. Let me just move this around. Oh, insight and innovation. It stayed right there. They're still linked. It's still, it's still about, you know, things are still linked. I didn't copy and paste boxes and separate type. It's still all linked. But I can sit here and freely move these things around without worrying about horrible reflow problems. Now I don't, I don't get to share that very often with students, even in this class, but I saw opportunity for it and it might make your lives a little bit easier. Okay, keeps things from flowing so badly on you. Fabulous. Now, I will warn you, you have seven different, or no, I'm sorry, six different pages of, of stuff here. You, uh, and I did want you to kind of play around with different fonts and stuff. What you don't want to do is go, oh, well, she said this is a drop cap, body copy, and she said, let's make all of this just regular body copy, and let's make these the subheadlines. There's a subheadline, there's a subheadline. There's a subheadline. You look how quickly that went. Went so quickly. And you're like, oh, but I want to change these. Now, see how nice this is? We want it to be Futura, and we want that to be uh, Optima, the typeface Optima. Now you're going, oh, you know what? I'm going to edit this one. I'm going to go, oh, double click on this, and I'm going to make this. Um, I'm going to change this uh, to uh, Bodoni or Baskerville or something. Arial. Oh, Arial. Don't use Arial, by the way. There's a third one. Third font of the day not to use. Why not use Arial? It's beautiful. It's everywhere. Okay, that's a good reason. Why else not used to use Arial? You guys have heard of Helvetica by now, right? 
Well, Helvetica is the is the is the big pop of uh, sans serif typefaces. Arial was just basically a bastardized version of Helvetica, so it does it's not very well respected in the design world. If I had a student in portfolio on Portfolio Day that bragged about using Arial on something, and they just about got um, well, they didn't get torn up because people are really nice, but but the industry professional did say this at the end of the presentation. Sir, I would never brag about using Arial because Arial is a bastardized version of Helvetica. Just use Helvetica. Okay, so I'm not going to use Arial. Uh, but I was thinking about Baskerville. There we go. It all changed to Baskerville. Oops, this guy did not. Oh, darn. Let me hit OK. I'm going to have to get this other stuff to change to Baskerville. Do, 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 do. Baskerville, please. <clears throat> now, what's going to happen to my original layout? The one above this one. Yeah, I'm sitting here thinking I'm doing such a good thing. Like, oh, I'm doing my paragraph breaks. Oops, I got me a big situation there. That's supposed to be a subhead. And I want to do a paragraph break right here. So I'm going to highlight that little backwards P and hit enter. And I'm trying to get this all back to where it's supposed to go. And enter. Oops, he's out of there. Now what I have here is, oops, future is gone. That sucks. Usually you don't have one InDesign document with, seven different grids or I'm sorry six different grids with a bunch of different type sizes types type faces what do you usually have on one publication well you use one grid and you use usually about two type faces and any members of their family and so if you're just doing a two-page layout without all these additional experimentations this paragraph style stuff works out great but we're doing additional experimentation which kind of throws things off a little bit I suppose you could duplicate the paragraph styles. Or you might just create new ones. So you might call it page, you know, for this. I'm like, oh, Lord, this is going to get complicated. So I might go into this first spread where it says drop cat body copy. I could double click on that and rename this and call it um, first spread. First spread drop cat body copy. That way I know which is, goes to what. Now, I do not require that you use paragraph styles in this document, especially um, when we're experimenting with so many typefaces and so many grids. Uh, it, but I'm letting you know how useful it can be. You might want to try using them. They, they are fabulous. Uh, for the subheadline, I might double click on it and call it first spread head, subhead. So that way I know that this is the subheadline for the first spread that I've designed. So when I'm creating more of these, I could have a second spread body copy and a third spread body copy and so on. So I can quickly tell what paragraph style goes with what spread. I never, ne I never keep these as paragraph style one, two, or three. It'll automatically name them paragraph style one, paragraph style two, or whatever. I never do that because I need to, at a glance, know what I'm working with. And paragraph style one is just as meaningful to me as the word untitled. No meaning whatsoever. Okay, I'm going to save this. And I am going to quit recording because you guys look like you need a break. So I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>